Hello fellow adventurers. Welcome back to our mystical journey. Today let's go through the realms of Norse mythology. In this captivating video, we'll uncover the secrets of legendary creatures that have captured the imaginations of countless generations. So grab your shields and prepare for an adventure as we bring these mythical beings to life. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell to join us on this enchanting quest. Let's begin! Norns Norns, the mystical beings of Norse mythology, are central figures in the rich tapestry of Norse cosmology and folklore. These enigmatic entities, often referred to as weavers of fate, hold immense power over the destinies of gods and mortals alike. In this comprehensive exploration, we delve into the origins, characteristics, and cultural significance of the Norns, unraveling the intricate threads of their existence. From their mythical narratives to their historical and cultural interpretations, this deep dive into the Norns will shed light on their enduring legacy and influence. Origins and Nature of the Norns The Norns, known as Nornir and Old Norse, are female beings who govern the fate and destiny of all beings in the Norse cosmos. They are often depicted as three sisters, Ur, W-Y-R-D, Verandi, and Skuld, who reside beneath the roots of the world tree Yggdrasil or by the Well of Destiny, Erdebrunner. The Norns have different roles and aspects, representing the past, present, and future respectively. The name Norn is derived from the Old Norse word Nornir, which means to twine or to weave. This etymology reflects their central role as weavers of fate, spinning the threads of destiny for gods and humans alike. Their weaving is said to shape the course of events and determine the ultimate outcomes in the lives of individuals and the cosmos at large. Mythological Narratives The Norns appear in various Norse mythological narratives, playing pivotal roles in shaping the events that unfold. One of the most famous accounts featuring the Norns is the story of the Binding of Fenrir, the monstrous wolf destined to bring about Ragnarok, the cataclysmic end of the world. In this tale, the Norns are consulted to find a solution to the threat posed by Fenrir, highlighting their importance as arbiters of fate and destiny. Another significant myth involving the Norns is the tale of Baldur's death. Baldur, the beloved god of light and purity, falls victim to a plot orchestrated by Loki, ultimately leading to his demise. The Norns' role in this tragedy is tied to the influence of fate and the inability to change predetermined events, underscoring the power they hold over the lives of gods and mortals. Historical and Cultural Interpretations While the Norns primarily exist within the realm of mythology, their influence extends beyond ancient tales. Throughout history, the concept of fate in the Norns has resonated with Norse societies, leaving traces in various cultural expressions. Runestones, carvings, and other archaeological artifacts often depict the Norns, emphasizing their importance in the religious and cultural practices of the Norse people. The concept of fate in the Norns also find echoes in Old Norse poetry and sagas. Skaldic poetry, in particular, frequently references the Norns as the weavers of destiny, emphasizing their role in shaping the lives of individuals in the overarching narrative of Norse mythology. The Norns' presence in these literary works further solidifies their significance within the cultural fabric of Norse societies. Interplay with other Norse entities The Norns' interactions with other mythological figures are essential to understanding their broader significance. They are often depicted alongside the Asur and Vanir, the primary pantheon of Norse gods. Their presence in mythological narratives, such as the aforementioned stories of Fenrir and Baldr, showcases their complex relationships with these powerful deities. The Norns also share connections with other supernatural beings, such as the Valkyries and the Filges. These beings, associated with fate and destiny in their own right, further reinforce the interconnected web woven by the Norns. Together, these entities form a comprehensive system of Norse mythology that highlights the pervasive influence of fate and the Norns' role as its custodians. Symbolism and Interpretations Beyond their mythological roles, 
the Norns carry symbolic meanings and interpretations. Their association with fate, destiny, and weaving has led scholars to view them as embodiments of time itself. Their presence at the roots of Yggdrasil and Erdebrun aligns them with the concept of cosmic order, suggesting their role in maintaining the balance of the Norse cosmos. The Norns' triadic nature, representing the past, present, and future, also connects them to concepts of temporality and the cyclical nature of existence. They embody the interconnectedness of these temporal dimensions, underscoring the idea that the past, present, and future are intricately intertwined. Influence on Contemporary Culture The legacy of the Norns extends beyond the realm of ancient mythology. Their allure and symbolism have captivated the imaginations of artists, writers, and enthusiasts across the globe. In contemporary culture, the Norns continue to inspire various forms of artistic expression, including literature, music, visual arts, and even gaming. In literature, authors have drawn upon the Norns' themes of fate and destiny, incorporating them into their narratives. Their presence can be seen in fantasy novels, where characters grapple with the concept of predetermined outcomes and the struggle to defy or accept them. Additionally, the Norns' archetypal roles as weavers of fate have influenced the creation of mystical or prophetic characters in contemporary literature. The Norns' influence is also evident in music, particularly within the genre of Nordic folk and metal. Bands and artists have crafted songs that explore Norse mythology, often invoking the Norns as symbols of power, mystery, and the cyclical nature of life. These musical creations serve as tributes to the Norse cultural heritage and contribute to the ongoing fascination with the Norns. Visual artists have also been inspired by the Norns, depicting them in various forms and mediums. Paintings, sculptures, and illustrations capture the ethereal nature of these beings, showcasing their importance and evoking a sense of mysticism. These artistic interpretations allow for a visual exploration of the Norns' attributes and their connection to the broader Norse mythos. Furthermore, the Norns have made their mark in the realm of gaming. Norse mythology has served as a rich source of inspiration for video game developers, with the Norns often appearing as characters or elements within the game world. These interactive experiences allow players to immerse themselves in Norse mythology, encountering the Norns and witnessing their influence firsthand. Jormungandr Jormungandr, also known as the Midgard Serpent or the World Serpent, is a prominent figure in Norse mythology. This colossal sea serpent plays a significant role in the apocalyptic event known as Ragnarok. Jormungandr's origins, characteristics, and involvement in the Norse cosmology are fascinating subjects that span across various sagas and texts. In this comprehensive exploration, we will delve deep into the lore and symbolism surrounding Jormungandr, uncovering the intricacies of this mythical creature. The origins of Jormungandr can be traced back to the union of the god Loki and the giantess Angerboda. Loki, a complex and enigmatic figure within Norse mythology, is known for his mischievous nature and his ability to shapeshift. Angerboda, on the other hand, is a Jotun, a member of a race of giants. Their union produced three monstrous children, Hel, the ruler of the underworld, Fenrir, the ferocious wolf, and Jormungandr, the massive serpent. Jormungandr's birth caused great concern among the gods, as they foresaw the destruction and chaos this creature would bring. In response to this dire prophecy, Odin, the all-father and ruler of the Asur gods, took drastic measures. He cast Jormungandr into the depths of the ocean, where the serpent grew to immense proportions, encircling the entire world, with its tail in its mouth. This image of the serpent forming a circle around the earth represents the cyclical nature of existence and the interconnectedness of all things. Jormungandr's physical appearance is awe-inspiring and fearsome. It is often described as a serpent of unimaginable size, with a body so massive that it spans the entire ocean. Its scales glisten like the darkest depths of the sea, 
and its glowing yellow eyes strike fear into the hearts of those who gaze upon them. The serpent's mere presence in the waters causes violent waves and tempests, illustrating its immense power and influence over the natural forces. The symbolism associated with Jormungandr is multifaceted and rich in meaning. As a serpent, Jormungandr embodies the primal forces of chaos and destruction. In Norse mythology, chaos and order are inextricably linked, with the gods representing order and the giants, including Jormungandr, symbolizing chaos. Jormungandr's existence is a constant reminder of the delicate balance between these opposing forces and the inevitability of their clash. Jormungandr's role in the narrative of Ragnarok, the ultimate battle and apocalyptic event in Norse mythology, is pivotal. According to the prophecies, during Ragnarok, Jormungandr will rise from the depths of the ocean, releasing its tail and causing catastrophic events. It will swim towards the land, creating massive waves that will engulf the shores, leading to widespread destruction. As the serpent surfaces, it will unleash venomous breath, poisoning the skies and devastating the natural world. The arrival of Jormungandr during Ragnarok is closely intertwined with its destined confrontation with the thunder god Thor. Thor, the son of Odin and the protector of gods and humans, is depicted as a mighty warrior wielding the hammer Mjolnir. It is foretold that during Ragnarok, Thor and Jormungandr will engage in a cataclysmic battle, resulting in the death of both combatants. This epic clash represents the final struggle between order and chaos, with Thor representing the forces of order and Jormungandr embodying chaos. The confrontation between Thor and Jormungandr carries profound symbolic significance. It reflects the eternal struggle between opposing forces in the world and the inevitability of their clash. Thor's battle with Jormungandr symbolizes the gods' valiant efforts to maintain order and preserve the world from the destructive forces of chaos. Although the outcome of the battle is tragic for both combatants, it also signifies the cyclical nature of existence, where death and rebirth are intertwined. Beyond its role in Ragnarok, Jormungandr's symbolism extends to various aspects of Norse mythology and cosmology. The serpent's association with the ocean represents the primordial chaos that existed before the creation of the world. It is said that Jormungandr's presence in the waters prevents the world from falling into complete chaos, as its massive body keeps the land and sea separated. This notion of the serpent as a boundary or guardian reflects the Norse belief in the importance of maintaining balance and order. Furthermore, Jormungandr's connection to the concept of time is significant. The serpent's circular form, with its tail in its mouth, is reminiscent of the Ouroboros, an ancient symbol representing the cyclical nature of time and the eternal return. Jormungandr's encircling of the world suggests that it is an integral part of the cosmic order, playing a crucial role in the cycles of creation, destruction, and rebirth. The mythological significance of Jormungandr extends beyond Norse mythology and has influenced various aspects of literature, art, and popular culture. Its portrayal in contemporary media often emphasizes its immense size, power, and the impending doom associated with its emergence. Jormungandr has made appearances in video games, novels, comics, and movies, captivating audiences with its awe-inspiring presence and its role as a harbinger of destruction. Alfer, commonly known as elves, are mythical beings that have captivated human imagination and folklore for centuries. These ethereal creatures have been a part of various mythologies, folktales, and legends across different cultures around the world. The concept of elves has evolved and taken on different forms throughout history, but their essence remains consistent, a race of magical, immortal beings closely connected to nature and possessing great wisdom and beauty. The origin of elves can be traced back to Norse mythology, where they were known as Alfer. In Old Norse, Alfer translates to elves, but their depiction was quite distinct from the modern popular image of elves. In Norse mythology, elves were divided into two groups, Josulfar, Light Elves, and Dokhalfar, Dark Elves. 
The Josulfar were associated with light, beauty, and the spiritual realm of Alfheim, while the Dachalfar were linked to darkness, underground realms, and craftsmanship. The Norse elves were often depicted as tall and radiant beings with an otherworldly glow. They were known for their exceptional skills in magic, healing, and music. The Josulfar were believed to be messengers of the gods, while the Dachalfar were associated with more mysterious and secretive practices. Both groups of elves played significant roles in Norse mythology, interacting with gods, humans, and other mythical creatures. As the concept of elves spread across different cultures and influenced various mythologies, their characteristics and roles diversified. In Germanic folklore, elves were commonly associated with forests and were believed to be guardians of nature. They were depicted as small, delicate beings, often seen wearing green clothing and pointed hats. These elves were mischievous but not malicious, and they sometimes interacted with humans, either helping or playing pranks on them. In Celtic mythology, elves, known as Ausi or Sidhi, inhabited the other world, a realm parallel to our own. The Sidhi were considered the fairies of the Celtic tradition, and their appearance and behavior varied. Some were described as tall and radiant like the Norse elves, while others were depicted as small, enchanting beings. The Sidhi were associated with magic, enchantment, and the protection of sacred sites. In English folklore, elves took on a different form and were often referred to as pixies or brownies. These small, wingless creatures were mischievous but generally benign. They were known to help with household chores and gardening, but they could become troublesome if offended. The image of elves as diminutive, playful beings with a love for nature and a penchant for pranks became popularized through writers like William Shakespeare and J.R. Tolkien. The modern depiction of elves, particularly popularized by J.R. Tolkien's works such as The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, has had a profound influence on the contemporary understanding of these mythical beings. Tolkien's elves were elegant, wise, and majestic, known for their immortality, grace, and unparalleled craftsmanship. They were skilled archers, fierce warriors, and guardians of their realms. Tolkien's elves were deeply connected to nature, and their language, culture, and history were intricately woven into his fictional world. In Tolkien's mythology, elves were created by the divine being Iliavator, who fashioned them as the firstborn of his children. They awoke by the shores of a lake called Quivianen, and their journey throughout Middle-earth forms a significant part of Tolkien's narratives. The elves were divided into several distinct groups, such as the Vanir, Noldor, and Teleri, each with their own characteristics, abilities, and destinies. Tolkien's elves embodied many qualities that have come to be associated with elves in popular culture, grace, beauty, wisdom, and a deep connection with nature. They possessed immortality, although it came with the burden of longing for the undying lands, where their spirits would find eternal peace. Tolkien's elves were also depicted as skilled artisans, creating magnificent works of art, craftsmanship, and enchantments. Beyond Tolkien's influence, elves have appeared in numerous other works of fantasy literature, role-playing games, and media. They continue to enchant and inspire with their magical qualities, grace, and connection to nature. Elves often embody a sense of mystery, representing a bridge between the mundane world and the realm of magic and wonder. In contemporary popular culture, elves are frequently depicted as tall, slender humanoids with pointed ears, delicate features, and a timeless beauty. They are often associated with archery, magic, and an affinity for forests and natural landscapes. Elves have become a staple in fantasy literature, role-playing games, and movies, captivating audiences with their elegance, wisdom, and sometimes enigmatic nature. Elves' portrayal in popular culture has expanded beyond their mythological origins, incorporating new elements and interpretations. They have become protagonists, supporting characters, and even antagonists in various narratives, each with their own unique traits and backstories. 
Some stories depict elves as noble and virtuous beings fighting for justice and protecting the natural world, while others explore the darker and more complex aspects of their existence. In addition to their appearances in literature and media, elves have also become a part of modern subcultures such as cosplay, where enthusiasts dress up as their favorite characters and embody the qualities and aesthetics associated with elves. These subcultures provide a space for fans to express their creativity, connect with like-minded individuals, and further engage with the enchanting world of elves. While elves predominantly exist within the realms of mythology, folklore, and fantasy, their enduring popularity speaks to the human fascination with the mystical and the extraordinary. They represent a connection to our innate longing for magic, wisdom, and a harmonious relationship with nature. Elves embody qualities that many aspire to grace, beauty, wisdom, and a profound understanding of the natural world. The concept of elves transcends cultural boundaries and has been passed down through generations, evolving and adapting to different cultural contexts. Whether they are the ethereal Josulfar of Norse mythology, the mischievous brownies of English folklore, or the majestic beings of Tolkien's Middle-earth, elves continue to captivate our collective imagination. Jotner Jotner, also known as Jotun or Jotun, are a prominent group of supernatural beings in Norse mythology. These entities play a significant role in the cosmology and dynamic narratives of the Norse pantheon. Derived from Old Norse, the term Jotun translates to giant or devourer, and it encompasses a wide range of beings, including giants, trolls, and other monstrous creatures. In Norse mythology, the Jotnar are often depicted as primordial forces existing before the creation of the world. They are associated with chaos, wilderness, and the untamed forces of nature. While the gods and humans inhabit the ordered realms of Asgard and Midgard, respectively, the Jotnar represent a primal, unpredictable aspect of the cosmos. They are beings of immense power and size, capable of influencing the course of events in profound ways. The origins of the Jotnar can be traced back to the primordial being Emer, who emerged from the void at the beginning of creation. Emer was a hermaphroditic giant and the progenitor of all subsequent Jotnar. As Emer slept, a male and female Jotun grew from his armpits and his legs gave rise to a six-headed Jotun. These beings became the ancestors of the Jotnar race. In Norse mythology, the Jotnar are not confined to a single realm but can be found throughout the Nine Worlds. They dwell in Jotunheim, a realm separate from the realms of gods and humans. Jotunheim is characterized by towering mountains, treacherous landscapes, and harsh climates, reflecting the formidable nature of its inhabitants. The Jotnar are often portrayed as antagonistic figures, coming into conflict with the gods and posing threats to the established order. Their interactions with the gods are marked by a complex mix of animosity, alliances, and intermarriage. These interactions frequently result in epic battles, both physical and metaphorical, as the gods strive to maintain their dominion over the cosmos. Loki, the trickster god, is one of the most well-known Jotnar in Norse mythology. Although he is counted among the gods, he is actually the son of the Jotun Laufey. Loki's dual heritage places him in a unique position, often serving as a bridge between the gods and the Jotnar. His actions frequently blur the lines between chaos and order, causing strife and disruption within the divine realms. The Jotnar are characterized by their immense strength, often surpassing that of the gods. They possess the ability to shapeshift into various forms, enabling them to deceive and manipulate their opponents. Many Jotnar are depicted as possessing multiple heads or limbs, representing their chaotic and unpredictable nature. Among the notable Jotnar in Norse mythology is Skadi, a powerful giantess associated with winter, skiing, and hunting. Skadi is known for her fierce independence and her marriage to the god Jord, resulting from a complicated series of events. Her story highlights the complex relationships and negotiations between the gods and the Jotnar. Another prominent Jotun is Searcher, 
a fire giant who plays a pivotal role in the events of Ragnarok, the apocalyptic battle that brings about the end of the world. Searcher wields a flaming sword and is destined to set the world ablaze, contributing to the destruction and subsequent rebirth of the cosmos. While the Jotnar are often portrayed as antagonistic, they are not inherently evil. Norse mythology presents a nuanced view of these beings, acknowledging their capacity for both malevolence and benevolence. Some Jotnar are depicted as wise and knowledgeable, possessing arcane secrets and offering guidance to the gods when circumstances require it. The Jotnar also have familial ties to the gods through intermarriage. Many gods, such as Thor and Freyr, have Jotun mothers, blurring the boundaries between the two groups. These mixed heritage individuals often serve as mediators or diplomats, bridging the gap between the gods and the Jotnar. The portrayal of the Jotnar in Norse mythology reflects the ancient Norse worldview, which recognized the power and unpredictability of nature. The giants and trolls are embodiments of the untamed forces of the natural world, emphasizing the precarious balance between order and chaos. Through the interactions and conflicts between the gods and the Jotnar, Norse mythology explores themes of power, destiny, in the inevitable cycles of creation and destruction. As with many mythological beings, the Jotnar also serve as symbolic representations of human fears, desires, and aspirations. They embody the unknown and the uncontrollable, reflecting the challenges and mysteries that humans face in their lives. By interacting with these powerful and enigmatic beings, the gods navigate the intricate web of existence highlighting the complexities of the human condition. Draugr In the rich tapestry of Norse mythology, the Draugr stands as a formidable and haunting figure. These undead creatures, originating from the folklore of ancient Norse societies, have captured the imagination of generations with their eerie presence and supernatural powers. Often depicted as powerful warriors, the Draugr wielded a potent blend of physical strength magical abilities, and an insatiable thirst for vengeance. This essay aims to delve into the world of the Draugr, exploring their origins, characteristics, legends, and cultural significance within Norse mythology. Origins and Etymology The word Draugr finds its roots in Old Norse, with strong connections to Old English and Old High German. Etymologically, it is derived from the verb Draug, meaning to drag or to haunt. The term Draugr emerged as a common descriptor for these supernatural entities, reflecting their association with restless spirits that haunted the living. Physical Manifestation The Draugr were believed to be the reanimated corpses of warriors who had died under unnatural circumstances. They retained their physical appearance, resembling their former selves but often appearing more gruesome due to the decay and decomposition of their bodies. Despite their undead status, Draugr possessed the strength and vitality they had in life, making them formidable opponents. Powers and Abilities Superhuman Strength One of the most prominent traits of the Draugr was their extraordinary physical strength. These creatures were known to possess an otherworldly might, capable of overpowering multiple adversaries with ease. They could crush bones, bend metal, and exhibit feats of strength far beyond that of any living warrior. Shape-shifting and size manipulation Draugr were thought to possess shape-shifting abilities. They could alter their forms, assuming different sizes and appearances. This ability allowed them to intimidate their opponents or infiltrate their surroundings, heightening their effectiveness as supernatural beings. Invisibility and Etherealness Another supernatural characteristic attributed to the Draugr was their ability to become invisible or ethereal at will. This power allowed them to move through solid objects, such as walls or locked doors, and catch their victims off guard. The Draugr's ethereal nature made them elusive and difficult to combat. Necromantic Powers Draugr were closely associated with necromancy, the dark arts of manipulating the dead. 
They possess the ability to control and summon lesser undead creatures, such as zombies or skeletons, to aid them in battle or carry out their bidding. Magical Affinities In addition to their physical and necromantic abilities, Draugr were believed to possess a range of magical powers. They could cast spells, curses, and hexes, inflicting misfortune or illness upon their enemies. Their magical prowess made them formidable adversaries, capable of harnessing the forces of the supernatural to further their goals. Origins and Creation Draugr were thought to originate from individuals who died under specific circumstances. These circumstances often involved violence, betrayal, or dishonor. Warriors who fell in battle, victims of murder, or those abandoned by their comrades were believed to be more susceptible to becoming Draugr. Moreover, individuals who led immoral lives or were cursed by powerful sorcery could also transform into these undead beings after death. Legends and Folklore Revenge and Protection of Burial Grounds Draugr were known for their fierce and vengeful nature. They would rise from their graves to avenge perceived wrongs, protect their treasures, or guard sacred burial grounds. Legends often recounted tales of Draugr terrorizing nearby villages or haunting specific locations, seeking justice or retribution for the deeds done to them in life. The Draugr is Shape Changers Several legends depicted Draugr assuming animal or monstrous forms to terrorize humans. They would transform into wolves, bears, serpents, or other fearsome creatures, striking fear into the hearts of those who crossed their path. These shape-shifting abilities added an element of unpredictability and dread to the Draugr's already fearsome reputation. Theft of Wealth and Curses Draugr were often associated with hoarded wealth, both material and intangible. They guarded their riches with great ferocity, and anyone who dared to steal from them would face dire consequences. Legends warned of Draugr curses, which could bring illness, misfortune, or even death to those who disturbed their resting places or coveted their treasures. The Creation of Draugr Legends also detailed the various means through which someone could become a Draugr. These included dying by violence, being buried with unsanctioned magical artifacts, or being cursed by a powerful sorcerer. The process of transformation into a Draugr was believed to involve the departure of the soul from the body, which would then be reanimated by dark forces, granting the deceased a twisted form of immortality. Cultural Significance and Symbolism Fear and Mortality The existence of Draugr in Norse mythology served as a reminder of the ever-present fear of death and the consequences of dishonorable actions. The tales surrounding these undead warriors highlighted the importance of living a righteous life and facing death with dignity, as those who failed to do so risked becoming vengeful and tormented entities in the afterlife. Ancestral Worship and Burial Customs The presence of Draugr in Norse mythology also shed light on the significance of ancestral worship and burial customs in Norse society. The belief in the existence of these supernatural beings reinforced the importance of properly honoring the dead, as the mistreatment or disrespect of the deceased could result in their transformation into malevolent beings. Heroic Ideals and Valor in Battle Draugr, often portrayed as powerful warriors, embodied the heroic ideals and values esteemed in Norse culture. Their ability to rise from the grave and continue their battles in the afterlife emphasized the importance of bravery, honor, and valor in combat. The legends surrounding Draugr served as inspiration for warriors, encouraging them to fight fearlessly and face death with unwavering resolve. Supernatural Forces in the Boundaries of the Natural World The presence of the Draugr in Norse mythology blurred the boundaries between the natural and supernatural realms. These undead creatures possessed powers and abilities that defied the laws of nature, demonstrating the belief in a world beyond the physical and the existence of forces beyond human comprehension. Modern Interpretations and Pop Culture The legends of the Draugr continue to captivate modern audiences and influence popular culture. 
Their portrayal in literature, films, video games, and other media has cemented their status as iconic figures of Norse mythology. Contemporary adaptations often draw upon the Draugr's supernatural abilities, physical prowess, and vengeful nature, showcasing them as formidable antagonists or enigmatic characters. Troll In Norse mythology, a troll is a supernatural creature that plays a significant role in the folklore and legends of the Norse people. Trolls are often depicted as large, powerful beings with a distinct appearance and behavior. While the concept of trolls varies across different cultures, this explanation will focus on the portrayal of trolls in Norse mythology. Origins and Characteristics The origins of trolls in Norse mythology are deeply rooted in ancient Scandinavian folklore. The word troll is derived from the Old Norse term troll, which means fiend or monster. Trolls are believed to have originated from the primeval Jotun race, a group of giants that predated the gods. Trolls are typically described as large and grotesque creatures, often towering over humans and possessing immense strength. They are depicted with deformed features, such as oversized noses, long limbs, and misshapen bodies. Some trolls are even depicted with multiple heads or limbs. Their appearance often reflects their connection to nature, with rugged and rock-like skin, resembling the landscapes they inhabit. Trolls are known for their association with darkness, wilderness, and caves. They are primarily nocturnal creatures, venturing out at night and seeking shelter during the day. They are often found dwelling in remote and desolate areas such as mountains, forests, and deep caves. This isolation from human civilization contributes to their mysterious and otherworldly reputation, behavior, and abilities. Trolls are characterized by their unpredictable and often malicious behavior. They are considered to be dangerous and hostile towards humans, frequently engaging in acts of mischief, trickery, and violence. Trolls are known for their fondness for chaos and disruption, delighting in causing harm and spreading fear among mortals. One of the most well-known attributes of trolls is their aversion to sunlight. Exposure to sunlight turns trolls into stone rendering them immobile and vulnerable. This vulnerability to light is often exploited by humans in tales involving trolls. It is said that trolls retreat to their dark caves and hide during daylight hours to avoid this transformation. Trolls possess tremendous physical strength and are capable of great feats of power. They are said to hurl massive boulders, uproot trees, and tear apart structures with ease. Some tales even describe trolls as being able to shapeshift into animals or objects, further enhancing their ability to deceive and trick unsuspecting victims. Interactions with Humans Trolls are notorious for their interactions with humans in Norse mythology, often serving as antagonistic figures in various tales. They are known to abduct humans, particularly children, leading to their disappearance and causing distress among their families. Trolls have a particular fondness for stealing treasures and hoarding them deep within their underground lairs. In Norse mythology, trolls are often depicted as adversaries to the gods and heroes. Many legendary figures, such as Thor and Odin, engage in battles and conflicts with trolls. These encounters serve to demonstrate the strength, courage, and cunning of the gods and heroes as well as their role in protecting humanity from the malevolent forces of the troll realm. Trolls also feature prominently in folklore, where they serve as cautionary figures warning against the dangers of venturing into the wilderness alone or straying from well-traveled paths. They are often portrayed as guardians of the land, fiercely protecting their territories from intruders. Symbolism and Interpretations the portrayal of trolls in Norse mythology carries symbolic significance and reflects the worldview of the ancient Norse people. Trolls embody the untamed forces of nature, representing the wild and unpredictable aspects of the world. They are associated with chaos and disorder, contrasting with the order and stability represented by the gods and civilization. Trolls can be seen as personifications of the fears and dangers that humans face when venturing into unknown or hostile environments. 
They serve as reminders of the inherent risks of exploring unfamiliar territories and the importance of caution and vigilance in the face of adversity. Furthermore, trolls can also be interpreted as metaphors for the primal and instinctual aspects of human nature. They embody the darker impulses and desires that can lead individuals astray or bring harm to themselves and others. The battles between trolls and gods or heroes can be seen as symbolic struggles between the forces of chaos and order within the human psyche. Influence on Popular Culture The rich mythology and folklore surrounding Norse trolls have had a significant impact on popular culture. Trolls have become iconic figures in literature, film, and various forms of media. They are often portrayed as fearsome creatures, representing a threat to the protagonists and adding a sense of danger and adventure to the narrative. In recent years, the popularity of Norse mythology has surged, leading to trolls receiving renewed attention. They have become prominent features in fantasy literature and role-playing games, where they are often depicted as formidable adversaries that challenge the heroes on their quests. Conclusion Trolls hold a prominent place in Norse mythology, representing the untamed forces of nature, chaos, and the dangers of the wilderness. They are depicted as monstrous, powerful beings with a penchant for mischief and violence. Trolls serve as symbols of the primal and instinctual aspects of human nature, embodying the darker impulses that can lead individuals astray. Their interactions with humans, gods, and heroes in Norse mythology highlight the constant struggle between order and chaos, civilization, and the wild. The portrayal of trolls in Norse mythology has left a lasting impact on popular culture, with their distinctive characteristics and role as formidable adversaries being featured in various forms of media. The tales of trolls serve as cautionary stories, warning against the perils of venturing into unknown territories and the importance of remaining vigilant in the face of adversity. Dwarfs Dwarves hold a significant place in Norse mythology, playing a crucial role in the tales and legends of the Norse gods and heroes. These mythological beings are often portrayed as skilled craftsmen and miners who dwell underground and possess great knowledge and magical abilities. This extensive exploration aims to provide a comprehensive understanding of dwarves in Norse mythology, their origins, characteristics, roles, relationships with other beings, and their enduring legacy in Norse folklore. Origins and Nature of Dwarves In Norse mythology, dwarves are believed to have emerged from the primordial being Emer, who was formed from the mingling of elemental forces in the void of Janungagap. When the gods later killed Emer, dwarves were fashioned from the maggots that infested his corpse. This origin story illustrates their association with death and decay, emphasizing their earthy and subterranean nature. Dwarves are typically depicted as diminutive beings, often shorter than humans, with great strength and resilience. They possess exceptional craftsmanship skills and are renowned for their ability to forge powerful weapons, elaborate jewelry, and other magnificent creations. They are characterized by their long beards, which are considered a symbol of their wisdom and age. Dwarves are known to be hardworking and diligent, with a strong affinity for mining and the earth. Dwarves' Names and Tribes Norse mythology mentions several individual dwarves by name, each associated with a specific trait or skill. These names often reflect their characteristics or the objects they create. Some well-known dwarves include Brock and Eitri, who crafted the mighty hammer Mjolnir for Thor, and Sindri, who created other notable treasures. Other dwarves, such as Fafnir and Anvari, are central to the stories of dragons and cursed treasures. Dwarves are said to live in underground realms called Dwarven Halls or Dwarven Cities. These realms are thought to be hidden beneath the earth, deep within mountains or under large stones. Each dwarf clan or tribe has its own kingdom or domain, ruled by a dwarf king or chieftain. Examples of dwarf kingdoms in Norse mythology include Nidaveller, Svartalfame, and Dvergadal. Dwarf Skills and Craftsmanship 
One of the most prominent aspects of dwarves in Norse mythology is their exceptional craftsmanship. They are revered as the finest artisans and blacksmiths, capable of creating extraordinary objects with exceptional quality and magical properties. The dwarves' craftsmanship extends to various fields, including weapon making, jewelry, armor, and tools. Their creations often possess magical attributes or legendary powers. For instance, the spear Gungnir, wielded by Odin, was forged by the dwarves and was said to never miss its target. Similarly, the ship's Glanir, created by the dwarves for Freyr, had the ability to navigate through land, sea, and air. The dwarves' skill in crafting is so renowned that their work is often sought after by gods, giants, and heroes alike. Dwarves and the Asser The relationship between dwarves and the Asser, the principal gods in Norse mythology, is complex and multifaceted. Dwarves are often portrayed as allies and friendly towards the gods, forging powerful weapons and valuable treasures for them. However, they also play roles in various conflicts and intrigues with the gods, sometimes acting as antagonists or causing mischief. One notable instance is the tale of the dwarf brothers Brock and Sindri, who competed against Loki in a wager to create the most magnificent treasures for the gods. Loki, in disguise, sabotaged their creations, but the dwarves still managed to forge Mjolnir, Thor's hammer, and other notable items. This story highlights both the dwarves' skill and their involvement in divine conflicts. Dwarves and the Giants The relationship between dwarves and giants in Norse mythology is complex and often marked by animosity. While dwarves are generally depicted as smaller in stature, they possess great knowledge and craftsmanship that sometimes surpasses that of giants. This leads to rivalries and competitions between the two groups. The tale of the Cursed Ring and Varanad exemplifies the tension between dwarves and giants. Anvari, a dwarf, possessed a magical ring and a hoard of gold. When Loki stole the ring and gold, it led to a conflict between the gods and the giants, ultimately resulting in the death of the giant Hrydmar and the transformation of his son Fafnir into a dragon. Dwarves in Norse Mythology and Heroes Dwarves frequently interact with mortal heroes and play crucial roles in their quests and adventures. Heroes often seek the aid of dwarves in acquiring powerful weapons or obtaining valuable knowledge. The dwarves' creations and guidance are essential for the hero's success. The tale of Sigurd the Dragon Slayer provides a prominent example. Sigurd seeks the help of the dwarf Regan, who forges the legendary sword Gram and provides him with valuable advice. The Sword Graham proves instrumental in Sigurd's quest to slay the dragon Fafnir and acquire the cursed treasure. Dwarves and Magical Objects Dwarves are closely associated with the creation of magical objects in Norse mythology. These objects often possess mystical properties, granting their wielders extraordinary abilities or protection. Dwarves craft weapons, armor, and jewelry that become crucial elements in the myths and sagas of Norse literature. One such object is the necklace Brisingamen, created by the dwarves for the goddess Freya. This necklace is not only a symbol of beauty, but also a source of power and fertility. The theft of Brisingamen leads to a series of events and conflicts in Norse mythology, highlighting the importance of dwarven-made artifacts. Dwarves in Norse Cosmology in Norse cosmology, dwarves are associated with the realm of Svartalfheim, one of the Nine Worlds. Svartalfheim is described as a subterranean realm, home to the dwarves in their underground cities. It is a place of darkness and mystery, where the dwarves thrive in their craftsmanship and mining endeavors. Despite their association with Svartalfheim, dwarves also interact with other realms. They have connections with the gods in Asgard, the giants in Jotunheim, and other beings throughout the Norse cosmos. This interplay between different realms adds depth and complexity to the dwarves' role in Norse mythology. Dwarves in Norse Folklore and Legacy The influence of dwarves in Norse mythology extends beyond the ancient tales and legends. 
Their presence has left an enduring legacy in Norse folklore and cultural traditions. Even today, dwarves continue to be prominent figures in Scandinavian folklore, often depicted as mischievous or helpful beings. The image of dwarves as skilled craftsmen and miners has permeated Scandinavian culture, with mining and metallurgy holding significant historical and cultural importance in the region. Dwarven imagery and symbolism can be found in various art forms, including jewelry, sculptures, and paintings, showcasing the lasting impact of dwarves in Norse heritage. In modern popular culture, dwarves have gained prominence through fantasy literature, role-playing games, and films inspired by Norse mythology. They are often portrayed as rugged and stout warriors with a penchant for craftsmanship, drawing on the archetypal depiction of dwarves in Norse mythology. The Valkyries Valkyries are mythological beings from Norse cosmology, often depicted as fierce, warrior-like women who serve the gods by selecting the slain warriors on the battlefield and bringing them to the afterlife. The word Valkyrie is derived from Old Norse, with Val meaning the slain and Kurja meaning to choose. Thus, Valkyries can be understood as chooser of the slain. Attributes and Appearances Valkyries are usually depicted as striking and beautiful women, adorned in armor and armed with weapons. They possess formidable combat skills and are known for their bravery, strength, and cunning. In many accounts, Valkyries are described as having long, flowing hair and wearing winged helmets or cloaks, symbolizing their connection to the divine and their ability to traverse between realms. The Role of Valkyries The primary role of Valkyries is to serve Odin, the chief god in Norse mythology, also known as the All-Father or the God of War. Odin presides over Valhalla, a majestic and grand hall located in Asgard, the realm of the gods. When warriors die in battle, it is the Valkyries' responsibility to select the most courageous and worthy among them and transport them to Valhalla, where they will join Odin's army in preparation for the final battle of Ragnarok. Choosing the Slain the process of choosing the slain is a crucial task performed by the Valkyries. They observe the battlefield, watching the warriors fight, and determine who displays the most valor and skill. These chosen warriors, known as the Einherjar, are then taken by the Valkyries to Valhalla. The Einherjar are honored guests in Valhalla, where they engage in feasting, camaraderie, and intense training in preparation for the ultimate conflict. The Einherjar and Valhalla The Einherjar, handpicked by the Valkyries, are considered the elite warriors of Norse mythology. They are granted immortality and incredible strength, allowing them to fight alongside the gods during Ragnarok, the apocalyptic battle that will determine the fate of the cosmos. Valhalla itself is a magnificent hall with hundreds of doors, vast feasting halls, and an endless supply of food and drink. It is a place of eternal glory and honor, where warriors await their final battle. Valkyries as Shield Maidens The concept of the Valkyries as warrior women is deeply ingrained in Norse mythology. They are often portrayed as shield maidens, female warriors who fight alongside the male warriors on the battlefield. This association between Valkyries and shield maidens highlights the gender equality prevalent in Norse society where women were respected for their strength and courage. Valkyries and Freya While Valkyries primarily serve Odin, they are also closely associated with the goddess Freya, often considered the queen of the Valkyries. Freya is a multifaceted deity associated with love, beauty, fertility, and war. She shares many traits with the Valkyries, including her role in guiding the souls of fallen warriors. Some sources even suggest that Freya herself leads the Valkyries into battle. The Valkyries Mounts Valkyries are often depicted riding magnificent steeds, adding to their awe-inspiring presence. These mounts are typically strong and swift horses, capable of traversing great distances and carrying the Valkyries swiftly across the realms. Some accounts mention that the horses ridden by the Valkyries possess supernatural qualities, 
such as the ability to fly or gallop across water. Symbolism and Mythological Significance The Valkyries hold immense mythological significance within Norse culture, representing various themes and concepts. Death and fate, as choosers of the slain, Valkyries embody the inevitability of death and the role of fate in determining one's destiny. They symbolize the idea that every warrior's ultimate fate is predetermined and that their actions in battle influence their afterlife. Honor and Glory Valkyries are associated with honor and glory as they select warriors based on their valor and skill. The warriors chosen by the Valkyries are considered the most worthy and are rewarded with a place in Valhalla, where they will fight alongside the gods during Ragnarok. Female Empowerment the Valkyries' portrayal as fierce, independent, and skilled warriors challenges traditional gender roles and highlights the empowerment of women in Norse society. They serve as symbols of female strength, courage, and agency. Transition and Guidance Valkyries serve as guides for fallen warriors, helping them transition from the mortal realm to the afterlife. They navigate the realms, bridging the gap between the earthly realm and the divine, ensuring a smooth passage for the chosen warriors. Valkyries in Mythological Stories and Literature Valkyries feature prominently in various mythological stories and poems from Norse literature. One notable example is the Poetic Edda, a collection of Old Norse poems compiled in the 13th century. In the Poetic Edda, Valkyries are described in vivid detail, emphasizing their role in battle, their connection to the gods, and their judgment of fallen warriors. The Valkyrie Brynhild Among the Valkyries, one of the most well-known and revered is Brynhild. Her story is recounted in the Valsunga Saga, an epic tale of heroism, love, and betrayal. Brynhild is a valiant Valkyrie who defies the gods' will and falls in love with a mortal hero named Sigurd. Her tragic fate serves as a reminder of the consequences of challenging divine laws and the complex nature of love and loyalty. The Role of Valkyries in Ragnarok Ragnarok, the ultimate battle between the gods and various forces of chaos, is a central event in Norse mythology. Valkyries play a crucial role in this cataclysmic conflict, fighting alongside the gods and the Einarjar. They are fierce combatants, wielding their weapons with skill and determination, and their presence on the battlefield is instrumental in the final outcome of Ragnarok. Legacy and Influence The influence of Norse mythology, including the Valkyries, extends beyond ancient Scandinavia. These mythological figures have inspired countless artistic and literary works throughout history. From Wagner's opera, Der Ring de Nibelungen, to contemporary fantasy novels, the Valkyries continue to captivate imaginations and serve as symbols of strength, femininity, and heroism. Fenrir Fenrir, also known as Fenrisulf or simply Fenris, is a prominent character in Norse mythology. As the monstrous wolf and son of the trickster god Loki, Fenrir plays a significant role in the events leading up to Ragnarok, the cataclysmic battle that marks the end of the world. With his immense strength and ferocity, Fenrir embodies the fearsome power of nature and stands as a symbol of chaos and destruction. In this essay, we will delve into the origins, characteristics, and pivotal role of Fenrir in Norse mythology, exploring the various tales and interpretations associated with this enigmatic figure. To understand Fenrir's significance, we must first examine his lineage. He is one of three monstrous children of Loki and the giantess Angerboda, the others being Jormungandr, the Midgard Serpent, and Hel, the ruler of the Realm of the Dead. These three offspring are representative of the chaos and adversity that threaten the order of the cosmos, and they are all closely linked to the impending doom of Ragnarok. Fenrir's birth itself is shrouded in mystery and foreboding. The Asser, the principal gods of Norse mythology, became aware of the prophecies that foretold the wolf's role in Ragnarok. Fearing the destruction he would bring, the gods sought to prevent his growth and power. However, Fenrir grew at an alarming rate, quickly becoming a formidable beast. 
Recognizing the imminent danger, the gods decided to restrain him, but their attempts proved futile. The gods eventually turned to the dwarves, renowned craftsmen, to forge a chain capable of binding Fenrir. The dwarves created a magical chain called Gleipnir, which appeared to be a seemingly harmless ribbon. The gods, accompanied by the wolf, approached Fenrir, presenting the ribbon as a challenge to test his strength. Initially skeptical, Fenrir agreed to be bound by Gleipnir, believing it to be an easy task for him to break free. However, as the gods attempted to bind Fenrir with the ribbon, they found themselves facing an unexpected obstacle. Fenrir sensed their trepidation and refused to be bound unless one of the gods placed their hand in his jaws as a guarantee of their good faith. The god Tyr, known for his courage and sacrifice, volunteered, placing his hand in Fenrir's mouth. The god successfully bound the wolf, and Fenrir struggled violently, but he could not break free from Gleipnir's powerful magic. The binding of Fenrir became a pivotal moment in Norse mythology, representing the struggle between order and chaos. It demonstrated the gods' determination to contain the forces of destruction, even at the cost of sacrificing one of their own. Fenrir's imprisonment, however, only temporarily postponed the inevitable as Ragnarok loomed on the horizon. Fenrir's captivity lasted until Ragnarok, the final battle between the gods and the forces of chaos. The wolf, driven by his immense rage and hunger, finally broke free from Gleipnir, shattering the unbreakable chain. Unleashed upon the world, Fenrir embarked on a destructive rampage, seeking vengeance against the gods who had imprisoned him. In the apocalyptic battle of Ragnarok, Fenrir played a crucial role. He encountered the god Odin, the ruler of the Asser, and the two engaged in a fierce duel. Odin fought valiantly but fell victim to Fenrir's ferocity, succumbing to the wolf's powerful jaws. This event marked the culmination of Fenrir's story and the fulfillment of the prophecies of Ragnarok. Fenrir's portrayal in Norse mythology reflects the ancient Norse worldview, where the forces of chaos and the inevitability of destruction were ever-present. The wolf's immense size, strength, and insatiable hunger embody the untamed power of nature, a force that could not be permanently contained. Fenrir's role as the harbinger of Ragnarok underscores the Norse belief in cyclical patterns of creation and destruction, with the cosmos destined to be reborn after the cataclysmic battle. Beyond his significance in the mythological narrative, Fenrir also serves as a symbolic figure. He represents the primal instincts and wildness that lie within each individual, lurking beneath the veneer of civilization. Fenrir embodies the fear of uncontrolled chaos and the struggle to contain one's own destructive impulses. He serves as a reminder of the ever-present tension between order and chaos, a theme that resonated deeply within the Norse worldview. Throughout history, Fenrir has captured the imagination of countless individuals, inspiring various interpretations in literature, art, and popular culture. His portrayal as a monstrous wolf has often been associated with themes of rebellion, power, and the struggle against oppression. In modern storytelling, Fenrir appears in numerous fantasy works, serving as a formidable antagonist or a symbol of untamed strength. Nidhogg Nidhogg, also known as NHGGR, is a prominent figure in Norse mythology, specifically in the Prose Edda, a collection of Old Norse poems and stories compiled by the Icelandic scholar Snorri Sturluson in the 13th century. Nidhogg is a fearsome dragon-like creature, often associated with death, decay, and chaos. Its role in Norse mythology is multifaceted and complex, intertwining with various aspects of the cosmos, the concept of the world tree, and the afterlife. In this essay, we will explore the origins, characteristics, symbolism, and various interpretations of Nidhogg within the rich tapestry of Norse mythology. The etymology of Nidhogg's name sheds some light on its nature and characteristics. The term NHGGR is derived from the Old Norse words NR meaning malice or insult and Hagva meaning to strike or to slay. 
This etymology suggests that Nidhogg is closely associated with negativity, destruction, in the act of striking down. The name itself reflects the destructive and malevolent nature of this creature. In Norse cosmology, Nidhogg resides in the roots of Yggdrasil, the great world tree that connects the nine realms of the Norse cosmos. The world tree is a central symbol in Norse mythology, representing the interconnectedness of all things in the cosmic order. It serves as a conduit between the various realms, including Asgard, the realm of the gods, and Midgard, the realm of humans. Nidhogg's dwelling place within the roots of Yggdrasil is known as Nidafol, which translates to Dark Mountains or Nidhogg's Fells. This location is often depicted as a gloomy realm associated with decay, darkness, and the underworld. It is said that Nidhogg gnaws on the roots of Yggdrasil, perpetually causing damage and decay. This action, along with its role as a devourer, signifies Nidhogg's connection to entropy and destruction. One of the primary functions of Nidhogg is to disrupt the cosmic order by damaging Yggdrasil. The world tree, as the cosmic axis, maintains the balance and stability of the Norse cosmos. Nidhogg's constant gnawing on its roots is seen as an attempt to undermine this balance, leading to chaos and disorder. The creature's actions can be interpreted as a metaphor for the inherent destructive forces in the universe that constantly threaten the established order. Nidhogg's association with death and decay extends beyond its role as a tree-dwelling pest. The creature is also closely linked to the concept of the afterlife in Norse mythology. According to the Prose Edda, Nidhogg feeds on the corpses of the dead in the realm of Nastrand, a grim and desolate place in the underworld called Hell. Nastrand is described as a hall with walls made of serpents, and its floor is covered in a layer of venom. This imagery reinforces Nidhogg's connection to death, suffering, and the underworld. Furthermore, the Prose Edda mentions that Nidhogg's wings are coated with the blood of the dead. This detail adds to the creature's macabre nature and its role as a participant in the cycle of life and death. By consuming the remains of the deceased, Nidhogg symbolizes the inevitable decay and dissolution that await all living beings, emphasizing the transient nature of existence in Norse mythology. Nidhogg's antagonistic relationship with the gods is also a significant aspect of its mythology. The creature is portrayed as an enemy of the gods, particularly the chief god Odin. It is said that Nidhogg holds a grudge against Odin, and their enmity is rooted in ancient conflicts and perceived slights. This feud represents a fundamental struggle between chaos and order, as well as the ongoing tension between the forces of destruction and creation. Despite its antagonism towards the gods, Nidhogg is not portrayed as an all-powerful adversary. In the Prose Edda, it is mentioned that four stags inhabit the branches of Yggdrasil and constantly nibble on the tree's foliage. These stags represent the forces of order and stability, counteracting Nidhogg's destructive influence. This dynamic suggests that while Nidhogg embodies chaos and decay, there are counterbalancing forces that work to maintain the cosmic equilibrium. Nidhogg's role as a symbol of chaos and destruction has also been interpreted in a moral context. In some interpretations, Nidhogg represents the sins and vices of humanity. The creatures gnawing on the roots of Yggdrasil can be seen as a metaphor for the corrosive effects of negative actions and behaviors on the world. Just as Nidhogg's actions threaten the stability of the cosmos, human actions can disrupt the harmony of society and lead to chaos and suffering. Additionally, Nidhogg's association with the realm of the dead and its consumption of corpses can be seen as a reflection of the consequences of immoral actions in the afterlife. It serves as a reminder of the potential repercussions of one's deeds and the importance of leading a virtuous life. Another interpretation of Nidhogg's role in Norse mythology focuses on its connection to the concept of Ragnarok, the cataclysmic event that marks the end of the world in Norse mythology. According to the Prose Edda, during Ragnarok, Nidhogg will rise from its underground lair and join the forces of chaos in their battle against the gods. 
This apocalyptic scenario further emphasizes Nidhogg's role as a harbinger of destruction and upheaval. However, Nidhogg's involvement in Ragnarok also carries a sense of renewal and rebirth. The destruction brought forth by this event is seen as a necessary step in the cyclical nature of the cosmos. After the devastation, a new world will emerge, and the cycle of life, death, and rebirth will continue. In this context, Nidhogg's actions can be seen as a catalyst for transformation and the renewal of cosmic order. It is worth noting that while the prose Edda provides the most detailed and well-known accounts of Nidhogg, there are variations and inconsistencies in different Norse sources. Some texts describe Nidhogg as a serpent rather than a dragon-like creature, while others mention other creatures that inhabit the roots of Yggdrasil alongside Nidhogg. These discrepancies highlight the fluid nature of Norse mythology and the diverse interpretations that have arisen over time. Hagin and Munin Hagin and Munin are two prominent figures in Norse mythology, often associated with the chief god Odin. These two entities take the form of ravens and are known for their close association with Odin, as they serve as his loyal companions and messengers. The names Hagin and Munin translate to thought and memory, respectively, and their significance extends beyond their role as mere birds in the mythology. Hagin and Munin symbolize important aspects of Odin's character and his quest for knowledge and wisdom. This essay aims to explore the origins, characteristics, and symbolic meanings of Hagin and Munin within the context of Norse mythology. The concept of animal companions or familiars is prevalent in various mythologies around the world, and Norse mythology is no exception. Animals, especially birds, often serve as intermediaries between the divine and mortal realms. In Norse mythology, Odin, the All-Father and the King of the Gods, has two such companions in the form of Hagen and Manen. These ravens are frequently depicted as perched on Odin's shoulders or flying alongside him, lending an air of mysteriousness and wisdom to the god. The earliest references to Hagen and Munin can be found in the Poetic Edda, a collection of Old Norse poems compiled in the 13th century. One of the most well-known poems featuring the ravens is the Havamal, a part of the larger Edda. In this poem, Odin speaks about his journey to acquire knowledge and wisdom, recounting his self-sacrifice and the ordeals he endured to obtain the powerful runes. Odin reveals that he has learned many secrets from the ravens, suggesting their integral role in his acquisition of knowledge. The symbolism of Hagen and Munin is deeply intertwined with Odin's attributes and characteristics. Odin is often depicted as a god of wisdom, poetry, war, and magic. He is known for his insatiable thirst for knowledge and his relentless pursuit of wisdom. This pursuit is exemplified by his quest for the powerful runes, which grant him immense power and understanding of the world. Hagen and Munin, as the embodiment of thought and memory, play a crucial role in Odin's quest for knowledge. Hagen, the raven of thought, represents Odin's intellectual and analytical nature. The name Hagin derives from the Old Norse word Huger, which translates to thought or mind. This raven symbolizes Odin's capacity for deep thinking, strategic planning, and critical analysis. Hagin represents the mental faculties that enable Odin to make wise decisions and foresee the consequences of his actions. The raven's association with thought also suggests Odin's ability to wander in thought and explore distant realms through his mind. On the other hand, Munin, the raven of memory, embodies Odin's desire to preserve and recall knowledge. The name Munin is derived from the Old Norse word mun, which signifies memory or mindfulness. Munin represents Odin's capacity to remember and retain valuable information. As the raven of memory, Munin serves as a repository of past wisdom and experiences, allowing Odin to draw upon his vast knowledge and learn from previous events. Munin's association with memory also implies Odin's ability to traverse time and gather insights from the past. The symbolism of Hagen and Munin extends beyond their individual characteristics. 
The ravens are often depicted as a pair, emphasizing their complementary roles and their inseparable connection to Odin. Hagen and Munin together represent the duality of thought and memory, intellect and recollection, and the interplay between analytical thinking and the preservation of knowledge. Their constant presence by Odin's side signifies the importance of these qualities in his divine rule and his pursuit of wisdom. The raven's role as messengers further emphasizes their significance. Hagen and Munin are tasked with observing the world and reporting back to Odin, providing him with valuable information about the happenings in the Nine Realms. Their ability to travel swiftly and cover vast distances makes them ideal messengers for the All-Father. They fly far and wide, witnessing events and gathering knowledge that Odin may not have direct access to. By relaying this information to Odin, the ravens aid him in making informed decisions and maintaining his authority and wisdom. The idea of ravens as messengers is not unique to Norse mythology. In many cultures, ravens and other corvids are associated with divination, prophecy, and guidance. Their dark plumage and mysterious behavior have often been linked to the supernatural and the otherworldly. In Norse mythology, Hagen and Munin's role as messengers aligns with this broader cultural association. As they soar through the skies, the ravens bridge the gap between the mortal and divine realms, acting as conduits for knowledge and communication. The symbolism of Hagen and Munin also extends to the concept of fate and destiny. In Norse mythology, the concept of fate, or WYRD, plays a crucial role. It is believed that the Norns, the three female beings who govern destiny, shape the lives of gods and mortals alike. Hagen and Munin, as Odin's trusted messengers, are intimately connected to the workings of fate. They witness events as they unfold and carry knowledge of past, present, and future to Odin, who possesses the capacity to shape destiny through his actions and decisions. The raven's association with fate is further exemplified in the Old Norse poem Grimnismal, also found in the poetic Edda. In this poem, Odin, disguised as Grimnir, imparts his wisdom to the young Agnar. Odin reveals that Hagen and Munin fly across the world each day and return in the evening, whispering secrets and knowledge into his ear. This depiction suggests that the raven's observations and messages contribute to Odin's understanding of the world and his ability to influence the course of events. The role of Hagen and Munin as messengers of fate is also evident in the context of warfare. Odin is considered the god of war and is often associated with battle and victory. The raven's presence on the battlefield signifies their connection to the fates of warriors. It is said that Odin would send Hagen and Munin to survey the battlefield, selecting those worthy of a glorious death and guiding the fallen souls to the afterlife in Valhalla, the great hall of the slain. This association with war and death further emphasizes the raven's role as agents of fate and destiny. Beyond their association with Odin, Hagen and Munin represent universal and timeless themes that resonated with the Norse people. The pursuit of knowledge, wisdom, and self-discovery is a fundamental aspect of human existence. Hagen and Munin embody the human desire for intellectual growth, critical thinking, and the preservation of collective memory. They remind us of the importance of thoughtfulness, mindfulness, and the continuous quest for knowledge in our own lives. The symbolism of Hagen and Munin has transcended Norse mythology and continues to inspire artistic and literary works to this day. The ravens have been depicted in various forms of visual art, including sculptures, paintings, and illustrations. They have also found a place in popular culture, appearing in novels, films, and video games, often as symbols of wisdom, guidance, or mysterious knowledge. Ratatosker Ratatosker, in Norse mythology, is a mischievous squirrel that dwells within the world tree Yggdrasil. Despite its seemingly insignificant appearance, Ratatosker plays a peculiar and intriguing role in the Norse cosmology. Within the extensive tapestry of Norse mythology, Ratatosker acts as a messenger and a catalyst for communication between various beings residing within the realms of the Norse cosmos. 
Its interactions and exchanges are known to both amuse and provoke the inhabitants of Yggdrasil, including the gods themselves. To understand the nature and significance of Ratatoskr, it is essential to delve into the Norse cosmology and the intricate structure of Yggdrasil. According to Norse mythology, Yggdrasil is an immense ash tree that connects and sustains the nine realms of existence. Its branches extend far and wide, reaching into the heavens, while its roots delve deep into the realms of the dead and the primordial chaos. Yggdrasil serves as a focal point, connecting beings from different realms and facilitating the flow of information and energy between them. Ratatoskr is depicted as a squirrel that scampers up and down the trunk of Yggdrasil, tirelessly traversing the tree's branches and roots. Its primary function is to carry messages between the eagle perched atop Yggdrasil's highest branches and the serpent Nidhogg, who gnaws at the roots of the world tree. These two beings, the eagle and the serpent, represent opposing forces within Norse mythology, embodying the realms of the heavens and the underworld, respectively. As Ratatoskr moves between the eagle and the serpent, it relays their taunts and insults, perpetuating a ceaseless exchange of verbal barbs. The squirrel relishes its role as a messenger, often embellishing and amplifying the messages it carries, fueling the antagonism and animosity between the eagle and the serpent. This perpetual cycle of communication serves to heighten the tension and hostility between the realms of heaven and the underworld, reflecting the inherent conflict and chaos present in Norse cosmology. The interactions of Ratatoskr extend beyond its role as a messenger. The squirrel is known to engage in conversations with various beings that inhabit the branches of Yggdrasil. Its chatty and inquisitive nature often leads it to interact with the gods themselves, including Odin, the all-father of Norse mythology. These exchanges are marked by Ratatoskr's mischievous and provocative demeanor, as it relays gossip, rumors, and even insults between the different inhabitants of Yggdrasil. In some tales, Ratatoskr's interactions with the gods and other creatures take a more sinister turn. The squirrel is said to incite conflict, spreading discord and sowing seeds of mischief. Its words carry a potent influence, capable of stoking the flames of rivalry and enmity between beings that would otherwise coexist peacefully. Ratatoskr's ability to manipulate and shape narratives makes it a potent catalyst for chaos, a small but influential agent within the intricate web of Norse mythology. The etymology of Ratatoskr's name provides further insight into its character and significance. The name Ratatoskr is believed to be derived from Old Norse roots, with rata meaning to gnaw, and tosker translating to tusk or tooth. This etymology highlights Ratatoskr's connection to the act of gnawing, signifying its role as a creature that burrows into the fabric of reality revealing hidden truths and fostering conflicts. Ratatoskr's existence within Yggdrasil also symbolizes the notion of interconnectedness and communication. By traversing the vast expanse of the world tree, Ratatoskr serves as a conduit for the flow of information, linking disparate realms and enabling the exchange of ideas. Its ceaseless movement up and down the tree's trunk represents the never-ending cycle of communication, emphasizing the importance of dialogue and discourse in maintaining the delicate balance of the Norse cosmos. The mischievous nature of Ratatoskr aligns with the broader theme of trickery and cunning prevalent in Norse mythology. Trickster figures, such as Loki, are prominent within the Norse pantheon, and Ratatoskr's actions often echo their disruptive influence. Like these tricksters, Ratatoskr embodies the chaotic and unpredictable aspects of the natural world, challenging the status quo and fostering change through its interactions. In Norse mythology, there is Garm. Garm, also known as Garmer or Garmer, is a monstrous hound associated with the realm of hell. Garm is mentioned in various Old Norse texts, including the Poetic Edda and the Prose Edda, and plays a significant role in the events leading up to Ragnarok, the cataclysmic battle that marks the end of the world. The name Garm is derived from the Old Norse word Garmr, which generally refers to a fierce dog or wolf. 
Garm is often described as a blood-stained canine with gleaming eyes and sharp teeth. Its appearance exudes an aura of darkness and ferocity, instilling fear in both gods and mortals. According to Norse mythology, Garm resides in Nypa Cave, located near the entrance of Hell, the realm of the dead. Garm is said to guard the entrance to Hell, preventing the souls of the deceased from escaping and the living from entering. It acts as a sentinel, perpetually watching over the realm and standing as a formidable obstacle for any intruders. Garm's origins are not explicitly mentioned in the surviving Norse texts, but some scholars speculate that it might be related to the monstrous wolves, Fenrir and Skoll. Fenrir is a giant wolf and one of Loki's offspring, destined to bring about great destruction during Ragnarok. Skoll, on the other hand, is a wolf that chases the sun across the sky, and it is believed that Skoll and its counterpart Hattie will eventually devour the sun and moon, respectively, during Ragnarok. In the poetic Edda, Garm is mentioned in the poem Voluspa, the prophecy of the seeress, which provides a prophetic account of the creation of the world and its ultimate destruction. In the poem, Garm is briefly mentioned as one of the beings that will play a role in the events leading up to Ragnarok. The stanza states, Eastward dwells the Ancient One, in Ironwood, and there he breeds, a certain kind of hound, the Garm. He is the greatest of all dogs. This stanza suggests that Garm's existence predates the current world and that it resides in a place called Ironwood, which is often associated with the realm of the dead. The poem does not provide further details about Garm's role in Ragnarok, but highlights its significance by describing it as the greatest of all dogs. The Prose Edda, written by the Icelandic scholar Snorri Sturluson in the 13th century, provides a more detailed account of Garm's involvement in the events leading up to Ragnarok. In the section called Jilfagening, Snorri describes the creation of the world and introduces various mythological beings. According to Snorri, Garm is mentioned in the context of the god Tyr's encounter with the monstrous wolf Finner. Finner, who had grown in size and strength, posed a significant threat to the gods. The gods attempted to bind Finner using various chains, but all failed to contain the wolf's power. Finally, they sought the assistance of the dwarves, who forged a magical chain called Gleipnir. When the gods approached Finner with a new chain, the wolf was suspicious of their intentions and refused to be bound unless one of the gods placed their hand in its mouth as a gesture of good faith. Tyr, known for his bravery and self-sacrifice, volunteered and placed his right hand in Finner's mouth. As the gods bound Finner with Gleipnir, the wolf realized that it was unable to break free. Enraged, Finner bit off Tyr's hand, severing the god's right hand at the wrist. This act of sacrifice by Tyr demonstrates his courage and willingness to make personal sacrifices for the greater good. In this account, Garm is briefly mentioned as the one who avenges Tyr's loss. Snorri writes that Garm and Tyr are destined to kill each other during Ragnarok. This suggests that Garm, like Fenrir, plays a crucial role in the apocalyptic battle, opposing the gods and contributing to the chaos and destruction that marks the end of the world. While Garm's role in Norse mythology is relatively limited, its association with the realm of Hell and its position as a guardian of the dead make it an essential figure in the mythological cosmology. Garm's presence at the entrance of Hell emphasizes the Norse belief in the afterlife and the importance of maintaining the boundaries between the realms of the living and the dead. The concept of a monstrous dog guarding the realm of the dead is not unique to Norse mythology. Similar figures can be found in other mythologies, such as Cerberus in Greek mythology, which guards the entrance to the underworld, and the Egyptian god Anubis, who has the head of a jackal and oversees the judgment of souls. The motif of a guardian dog continues to resonate in various cultural traditions, reflecting the universal human fascination with death, the afterlife, and the liminal spaces between realms. S. Kraken. Kraken, the legendary sea monster of Norse mythology, has captivated the imaginations of people for centuries. With its immense size, mysterious origins, and fearsome reputation, 
the Kraken has become a symbol of the untamed power and danger of the sea. In this extensive exploration, we will delve into the rich tapestry of Norse mythology to understand the origins, characteristics, and cultural significance of this enigmatic creature. Norse mythology, the mythological beliefs and stories of the ancient Norse people, developed in the Scandinavian region during the Viking Age, approximately 793 to 1066 CE. These myths and legends were passed down through oral tradition and later recorded in written form, primarily in the Eddas and Sagas. Within this mythological framework, the Kraken occupies a distinctive and intriguing place. The term Kraken is derived from the Old Norse word kraki, which means unhealthy animal or twisted. Various accounts describe the Kraken as a colossal sea monster, often depicted as a squid or octopus-like creature, with enormous tentacles and a body of immense size. It was said to dwell in the depths of the ocean, lurking beneath the waves and occasionally emerging to wreak havoc on ships and sailors. One of the earliest recorded references to the Kraken can be found in the Kanung Skuggsja, or the King's Mirror, an Old Norse text written around the 13th century. In this work, the Kraken is described as a creature that resembles an island when resting on the surface of the water. Its sheer enormity and the whirlpools created by its movements were said to pose a grave threat to seafarers. The Kraken's origins are shrouded in myth and legend, making it challenging to pinpoint a definitive source. However, some scholars suggest that the creature may have been inspired by encounters with real-life marine animals, such as giant squid or colossal squid, which can grow to extraordinary sizes and possess formidable tentacles. These encounters, combined with the Norse seafarer's vivid imaginations, may have given rise to the legendary kraken. In Norse mythology, the kraken is often associated with the sea god Agur and his wife Ran. Agur is known as the ruler of the seas and the personification of the destructive power of the ocean. Ran, his wife, is often depicted as a sea goddess who collects drowned sailors in her net. Together, Agur and Ram preside over a realm called Agur's Hall, or Agur's Feast, where they host grand feasts for the gods and mythical beings. The Kraken's connection to Agur and Ran suggests its role as a servant or guardian of their watery domain. It is said to obey their commands, and its emergence from the depths is often associated with their desires or whims. Some accounts even describe the Kraken as a pet or loyal companion of Agur and Ran, further emphasizing its association with the sea deities. The Kraken's behavior and actions in Norse mythology are often depicted as catastrophic and calamitous. It is believed to possess immense strength and the ability to capsize ships with its massive tentacles or create violent whirlpools that pull vessels under the water's surface. Sailors feared encountering the Kraken, as it was believed to bring death and destruction, devouring entire crews and swallowing ships whole. Legends surrounding the Kraken's demise vary, reflecting the diverse nature of Norse mythology. Some tales suggest that the creature is invincible, while others depict heroic figures or gods successfully vanquishing it. The legendary hero, Thor, is sometimes credited with slaying the Kraken using his powerful hammer, Mjolnir. In other accounts, the mythical hero, Perseus, renowned in Greek mythology, is credited with the creature's defeat, highlighting the intermingling of different mythological traditions. The Kraken's influence extends beyond Norse mythology into popular culture, literature, and art. Its representation in contemporary media, such as films, books, and video games, has further enhanced its legendary status. The Kraken has become an iconic symbol of the vast and mysterious depths of the ocean, representing the primal forces of nature and the unknown. Fosgrim Fosgrim, also known as Fossigrimen or Fossigubbin, is a figure in Norse mythology associated with water and the natural world. Fosgrim is believed to be a type of water spirit or creature that resides in rivers, waterfalls, and other bodies of water. 
In Norse folklore, Fosgrim is often depicted as a talented musician who plays a hauntingly beautiful tune on his fiddle. The word Fosgrim is derived from the Old Norse words Fos meaning waterfall and Grim meaning mask or hood. This name reflects the spirit's close association with waterfalls and the hidden and mysterious nature of its existence. Fosgrim is believed to have a human-like appearance, but with some distinguishing features that set it apart from ordinary humans. According to Norse mythology, Fosgrim is described as a male entity, although there are variants of the myth in which Fosgrim is depicted as a female. The spirit is often described as an elderly-looking man with long, flowing hair and a beard. Fosgrim is said to have a captivating and otherworldly aura, which is heightened by its enchanting music. One of the most prominent aspects of Fosgrim's mythology is its musical prowess. It is believed that Fosgrim possesses extraordinary musical abilities and is a master of the fiddle or violin. The spirit's music is said to be so enchanting and bewitching that anyone who hears it is compelled to stop and listen. It is said that Fosgrim's music can evoke a wide range of emotions, from joy and ecstasy to melancholy and sorrow. In Norse folklore, Fosgrim is often encountered by humans who happen to stumble upon its territory, which is typically near bodies of water such as rivers or waterfalls. The spirit is known to be protective of its domain and can be quite territorial. However, Fosgrim can also be benevolent and willing to share its musical talents with those who show respect and admiration. According to legend, Fosgrim is known to make bargains or agreements with humans. It is said that if a person wishes to learn the secrets of Fosgrim's music, they must offer something in return. The exact nature of these bargains can vary, but they often involve the person promising to keep Fosgrim's existence a secret or offering a gift in exchange for the spirit's teachings. In some versions of the myth, Fosgrim is depicted as a tutor or mentor to aspiring musicians. It is believed that the spirit can teach humans to play the fiddle with incredible skill and precision, but only if they are willing to meet Fosgrim's conditions. These conditions can range from offering the spirit food or drink to performing specific tasks or rituals. There are also stories of Fosgrim using its musical abilities to trick or test unsuspecting humans. In these tales, Fosgrim challenges individuals to a musical contest or offers them a chance to play its fiddle. If the person fails to impress Fosgrim or violates the terms of their agreement, the spirit may exact a heavy price such as taking their soul or causing them great misfortune. Despite its association with water and music, Fosgrim is also considered a guardian of nature and wildlife. It is said to have a deep connection with animals, particularly those that inhabit water environments. Fosgrim is often depicted surrounded by fish or other aquatic creatures, and it is believed to have the ability to communicate with and control them. In some stories, Fosgrim is described as having the ability to shapeshift into different forms, including that of a fish or a beaver. This shapeshifting ability allows the spirit to move freely between the human and natural realms, further emphasizing its connection to water and the natural world. The mythology surrounding Fosgrim has had a significant influence on Scandinavian folklore and culture. The figure of Fosgrim has been the subject of numerous poems, songs, and works of art throughout history. Its portrayal as a mysterious and enchanting being has captivated the imaginations of many and continues to be a source of inspiration for artists and storytellers. In Norse mythology, there is Sleipnir. Sleipnir is a legendary eight-legged horse that belongs to the god Odin. Sleipnir is often depicted as one of the most remarkable and iconic creatures in Norse mythology, possessing great speed, strength, and intelligence. This magnificent steed plays a significant role in various tales and is closely associated with Odin's power and wisdom. Throughout the mythological narratives, Sleipner's origin, abilities, and symbolism have captivated the imagination of countless individuals, making it a truly fascinating and enigmatic figure in Norse folklore. 
The origins of Sleipner trace back to a peculiar and somewhat unconventional conception. According to the mythological accounts, Loki, the trickster god, transformed into a mare in order to distract a giant stallion named Svalfairy, which was aiding a stonemason in constructing a fortress. Loki's plan succeeded, and he became impregnated by Svalfairy, giving birth to a cult with unparalleled qualities. This cult was Sleipnir, a horse unlike any other, with eight legs and exceptional attributes that set it apart from ordinary equines. Sleipnir's most distinctive feature is its eight legs, which granted unparalleled speed and agility. This attribute allowed the horse to traverse vast distances in the blink of an eye, making it the fastest creature in the cosmos. The eight legs are often depicted as graceful and powerful, symbolizing Sleipnir's ability to move effortlessly between different realms and dimensions. This unique trait also represents Sleipnir's connection to the number eight, which holds great significance in Norse mythology as a symbol of cosmic order and balance. The speed and agility of Sleipnir made it an invaluable asset to Odin, the chief god of the Norse pantheon. Odin often mounted Sleipnir during his travels throughout the Nine Worlds, using the horse's incredible swiftness to gather knowledge, seek wisdom, and maintain his omniscient status. Sleipnir's ability to traverse various realms with ease reflects its role as a symbol of transcendence and the bridge between different realms of existence. Sleipnir's association with Odin is further emphasized by its role as a steed in battle. In Norse mythology, Odin is frequently depicted as a warrior god, leading the gods and heroes of Asgard into epic conflicts. Sleipnir's eight legs and exceptional speed made it an ideal mount for Odin during these battles, enhancing his martial prowess and enabling him to swiftly move across the battlefield. The image of Odin riding Sleipnir into battle symbolizes the god's dominance, strategic superiority, and divine authority. Moreover, Sleipnir's intelligence and discernment are often highlighted in the mythological accounts. The horse possesses deep wisdom and understanding, making it a trusted advisor and companion to Odin. Sleipnir's shrewdness is believed to stem from its unique lineage, being born from the union of Loki, the embodiment of cunning, and Svalfairy, a powerful and industrious stallion. This amalgamation of traits contributes to Sleipnir's reputation as a creature of exceptional intelligence, capable of offering valuable insights and aiding Odin in making crucial decisions. Sleipnir's significance extends beyond its connection to Odin. In Norse mythology, the horse is also associated with various other figures and events. For instance, Sleipnir plays a crucial role in the story of the god Baldur's death. When Baldur dies, his body is placed on a funeral pyre, and it is Sleipnir who carries Odin's son to the realm of the dead, signaling the beginning of Ragnarok, the apocalyptic battle that marks the end of the world in Norse mythology. Additionally, Sleipnir is occasionally linked to fertility and the cyclical nature of life. The eight legs of the horse symbolize the eight directions and the cyclical movement of time, representing the ever-turning wheel of fate and the interconnectedness of all things. This association further emphasizes Sleipnir's connection to cosmic order and its role as a harbinger of change and renewal. Sleipnir's symbolism and cultural significance have transcended the realm of mythology and continue to captivate modern audiences. The image of the eight-legged horse has pervaded popular culture, appearing in various forms of media, including literature, art, and entertainment. The horse's iconic representation has become synonymous with Norse mythology, representing its rich and vibrant tapestry of gods, heroes, and fantastical creatures. Hildisvini Hildisvini is a fascinating character in Norse mythology that holds a significant place in the tales of the gods and heroes. In this extensive explanation, I will delve into the origins, symbolism, and stories associated with Hildisvini, providing an in-eth exploration of this intriguing mythical creature. In Norse mythology, Hildisvini, which translates to battle swine or war pig, is a boar that plays a prominent role in the legend of the hero, Hildr, 
also known as Hildredjur Leafstadter. Hildr is a Valkyrie, a divine female warrior who serves the Norse gods. Hildr's story and her connection to Hildisvini provide us with valuable insights into the mythology and culture of the ancient Norse people. To fully comprehend the significance of Hildisvini, we must first understand the context in which this legendary creature exists. Norse mythology is a complex belief system that encompasses a vast pantheon of gods, goddesses, giants, dwarves, and a myriad of supernatural beings. The myths and legends of the Norse people were orally transmitted for generations before being recorded in written form. In Norse cosmology, the world is divided into several realms. One of the most important realms is Asgard, the realm of the Asur gods. Asgard is home to deities such as Odin, Thor, and Freya, among others. Another realm is Midgard, the realm of humans, which is connected to Asgard by the Bivrost, a rainbow bridge. Other realms include Jotunheim, the land of the giants, and Helheim, the realm of the dead. The Norse gods are not all powerful and eternal. They are subject to fate and can be wounded or killed. The concept of Ragnarok, a cataclysmic event in which the world ends, plays a significant role in Norse mythology. This cyclical view of existence emphasizes the impermanence of the gods and the inevitability of their eventual downfall. The boar, or specifically the wild boar, holds a special place in Norse mythology. It is associated with various gods and heroes and is often portrayed as a symbol of strength, ferocity, and fertility. Boars are frequently depicted in ancient Norse artwork, and their representations can be found on helmets, shields, and other artifacts. One of the most famous boars in Norse mythology is Gullenbursti, the golden bristled boar. Gullenbursti is a creation of the dwarves and is given to the god Freyr as a means of transportation. This boar possesses many magical qualities, including the ability to run across land, sea, and air with great speed. Gullenbursti is an emblem of Freyr's connection to fertility, prosperity, and abundance. Now, let us turn our attention to Hildisvini and the story of Hildr. Hildr is the daughter of the hero Hjörleifr, and she becomes a Valkyrie after her father's death. Valkyries are female figures chosen by the gods to serve in the realm of battle. They have the power to choose who lives and who dies in combat, guiding the souls of the fallen warriors to the afterlife. Valkyries are often depicted as fierce warriors, clad in armor and mounted on horses. In the tale of Hildr, she encounters a mysterious man named Hogni during her travels. Hogni is actually a shape-shifting god who approaches Hildr in the form of a talking boar. This boar is none other than Hildisvini. Hildr, intrigued by the boar's ability to communicate, feels a strong connection to the creature and decides to take it as her own. Hildisvini becomes Hildr's loyal companion and aids her in her duties as a Valkyrie. The boar possesses extraordinary qualities, symbolizing the attributes associated with boars in Norse mythology. Hildisvini is fierce, strong, and unyielding, embodying the spirit of battle and valor. The boar's presence serves as a testament to Hildr's status as a formidable warrior and a chosen servant of the gods. The symbolism of Hildisvini extends beyond its connection to Hildr. Boars are often associated with notions of protection, courage, and fertility. Their association with fertility stems from their role in the cycle of life and death. Boars are known for their relentless pursuit of food and their ability to reproduce rapidly, reflecting the cycle of abundance and renewal in nature. In Norse mythology, the boar also holds a connection to the god Freyr, who is associated with prosperity and abundance. As mentioned earlier, Freyr possesses the boar Gullenbursti, which serves as a symbol of his divine authority and his role as a bestower of bountiful harvests. The presence of Hildisvini, another boar, in the story of Hild adds depth to the symbolism associated with these creatures and their connection to concepts of strength, protection, and fertility. Moreover, the boar's association with Hildr and her role as a Valkyrie highlights the interplay between war and death in Norse mythology. 
Valkyries are figures of both destruction and guidance, as they select the fallen warriors who will join the gods in the afterlife. Hildr's bond with Hildisvini emphasizes the intertwining of battle and fate, as the boar accompanies her in her duties of choosing the slain warriors. The tale of Hildr and Hildisvini also touches upon the theme of transformation. Hogni, the shape-shifting god who assumes the form of the boar, represents the fluid nature of identity and the ability to assume different roles and guises. This theme is recurrent in Norse mythology, as many gods and supernatural beings possess the power of shape-shifting, blurring the boundaries between human and animal, and exploring the concept of duality. It is worth noting that the story of Hildr and Hildisvini is not as well documented as some other Norse myths, and variations of the tale can be found in different sources. The sources often provide fragmented information, making it challenging to establish a definitive narrative. Nevertheless, the core elements of Hildr's encounter with Hildisvini and its symbolic implications remain consistent. Favner Favner, a prominent figure in Norse mythology, is a fearsome dragon of immense power and greed. His story is intricately woven into the tapestry of Norse legends, with his origins traced back to the race of giants and his ultimate demise at the hands of the hero Sigurd. Favner's tale is one of transformation, greed, and the consequences of unchecked desires. To understand Favner's story, we must delve into the realms of Norse cosmology and the intricate relationships between gods, giants, and humans. In Norse mythology, the world is divided into nine realms, with Midgard, the realm of humans, at its center. Giants are a race of beings who inhabit Jotunheim, one of the nine realms, and are often depicted as powerful and supernatural entities. Favner's lineage can be traced back to the race of giants. He is the son of the giant Hrydmar, who is known for his skill in magic and his possession of a powerful magical artifact known as the Anverinod. Hrydmar had three sons, Favner, Regan, and Otter. Favner, the eldest of the three brothers, was a towering figure with an insatiable hunger for wealth and power. He was consumed by greed and coveted the vast treasures of his father, including the Anverinod. This powerful ring was crafted by the dwarves and endowed its possessor with great wealth and prosperity. Favner's desire for the Anverinot led him down a dark path, transforming him into a monstrous dragon. Driven by his newfound monstrous form, Favner abandoned his family and the realm of giants, seeking solitude and security in a desolate location known as Nidahai. Here, he transformed into a dragon with impenetrable scales a venomous breath, and an insatiable desire to guard the vast hoard of treasures he had accumulated. Favner's transformation into a dragon symbolizes the destructive power of unchecked greed. In Norse mythology, dragons are often associated with chaos and destruction, representing forces that threaten the order of the world. Favner's insatiable greed turned him into a symbol of this destructive chaos his monstrous form mirroring the corruption that greed can bring. News of Favner's transformation and his vast treasure hoard reached his remaining brothers, Regan and Otter. Regan, a skilled blacksmith and cunning sorcerer, saw an opportunity to exploit Favner's immense wealth. He sought out a hero who could slay the dragon, allowing him to claim the treasure for himself. Regan's search led him to the young warrior Sigurd, a hero destined for greatness. Regan forged a powerful sword, Graham, for Sigurd, believing that with this weapon, the hero could defeat Favner. Guided by Regan's knowledge and advice, Sigurd set out on his quest to confront the dragon and claim the treasure. The encounter between Sigurd and Favner is a moment of epic proportions in Norse mythology. Sigurd, armed with the enchanted sword Graham, approached the dragon's lair with caution and courage. Favner, Sensing the hero's presence, engaged him in a battle of strength and wit. Despite Favner's immense power and formidable defenses, Sigurd proved to be a worthy adversary. With a single swift stroke, Sigurd struck Favner's heart, ending the dragon's reign of terror. As Favner lay dying, he revealed a prophetic curse, 
warning Sigurd of the treachery that awaited him in the future. Sigurd emerged victorious, claiming Favner's vast hoard of treasure. However, the dragon's curse proved to be a harbinger of tragedy and betrayal. Regan, driven by his own greed and jealousy, plotted to kill Sigurd and claim the treasure for himself. This act of treachery would eventually lead to Sigurd's downfall, exposing the cyclical nature of greed and its destructive consequences. Skoll and Hattie Skoll and Hattie are two important figures in Norse mythology, known primarily for their association with the sun and the moon. According to ancient Norse beliefs, these celestial beings were believed to chase and devour the sun and the moon during the events known as solar and lunar eclipses. Skull specifically is associated with the sun, while Hattie is associated with the moon. In Norse mythology, the sun and the moon were seen as celestial bodies that were constantly pursued by these mythical wolves. This belief reflected the Norse understanding of the natural world and the cycle of day and night. Skoll and Hattie were considered to be the offspring of Fenrir, the monstrous wolf, and were destined to fulfill their roles in the celestial hunt. The name Skoll itself is derived from Old Norse, and its meaning can be traced back to treachery or mockery. This name reflects the nature of Skoll's pursuit of the sun, as it symbolizes the constant threat and danger that looms over the celestial body. Skull's role in Norse mythology is intertwined with the prophesied events of Ragnarok, the ultimate battle that brings about the end of the world. According to the prophecies, during Ragnarok, Skull and Hattie would finally catch up with their prey. Skull would devour the sun, plunging the world into darkness, while Hattie would consume the moon, further adding to the apocalyptic atmosphere. The celestial hunt conducted by Skoll and Hattie was not merely a physical chase but also held significant symbolic meaning. In Norse mythology, the sun and the moon represented cosmic order and harmony. Their pursuit and consumption by the wolves symbolized the disruption and destruction of this order, signaling the approaching end of the world as the gods and giants clashed in their final battle. The mythology surrounding Skoll and Hattie also highlighted the cyclical nature of time and the belief in the eventual rebirth and renewal of the world. After consuming the sun and the moon, Skoll and Hattie would be swallowed by their father, Fenrir, who was also prophesied to be slain by the god Odin during Ragnarok. This sequence of events marked a transition from the old world to the new, where a new cycle of creation and destruction would begin. The association of Skoll with the sun also linked him to the concept of solar worship in Norse mythology. The sun was revered as a powerful and life-giving force, and its daily journey across the sky held great significance. Skoll's relentless pursuit of the sun emphasized the vulnerability of this celestial body and the constant struggle to maintain its presence and power. It is important to note that Skoll and Hattie were not prominent figures in Norse mythology like Odin, Thor, or Loki. Their role was primarily limited to their celestial hunt and their involvement in the events of Ragnarok. However, their presence and actions played a crucial part in the grand narrative of Norse mythology, contributing to the overall cosmology and understanding of the natural world. The stories and beliefs surrounding Skoll and Hattie have been preserved through various sources, including the Poetic Edda, a collection of Old Norse poems, and the Prose Edda, which provides a more detailed account of Norse mythology. These texts, along with archaeological findings and historical records, have helped researchers and scholars reconstruct the rich and intricate tapestry of Norse mythology. In Norse mythology, there is Filja. The concept of Filja holds significant cultural and spiritual importance. The term Filja comes from the Old Norse language and is derived from the verb Filja, which means to accompany or to follow. It refers to a supernatural entity closely tied to an individual, often taking the form of an animal and serving as a guardian, protector, or representative of that person. Filger, plural form of Filja, are deeply rooted in the ancient belief systems of the Norse people and play a multifaceted role in their mythology, cosmology, and daily lives. 
Exploring the concept of Filja provides valuable insights into Norse culture, spirituality, and their understanding of the interconnectedness between humans, animals, and the divine. Origins and Context To understand the significance of Filja, it is crucial to examine the broader Norse cosmology and worldview. The Norse believed in a complex and interconnected web of beings that included gods, giants, dwarves, spirits, and various other supernatural entities. They saw the world as a dynamic and vibrant place where interactions between these different beings played a vital role. The Norse believed that every individual had a unique spiritual energy or essence, often referred to as the huger or hammer. This energy was not limited to the physical body, but extended into the spiritual realm. The Filja, therefore, was an extension of this energy, manifesting as an animal or a supernatural being that represented and guarded the individual. Characteristics and Forms While Filja are commonly associated with animals, they can also take the form of other beings, such as Desir, female ancestral spirits, fetches, or even inanimate objects. However, the animal form is the most prevalent and well-known manifestation of a filja. The specific animal associated with an individual's filja could vary widely, ranging from wolves, bears, eagles, cats, birds, and even insects. The filja is believed to share a deep spiritual bond with the person it accompanies. It is often considered an extension of the individual's identity, character, and destiny. The Filja's appearance and behavior are thought to reflect the qualities, strengths, and weaknesses of the person it accompanies. In some cases, the Filja may even appear in dreams or visions to provide guidance, warnings, or insights into the individual's fate, role, and functions. The Filja serves several important functions within Norse mythology and the lives of individuals. These functions can be broadly categorized into three main roles, protective, prophetic, and connective. Protective Role The Filja acts as a guardian and protector for the individual it accompanies. It is believed to possess a deep connection to the spiritual and supernatural realms providing a layer of defense against malevolent forces or entities. The Filja's presence is thought to ward off evil, misfortune, and harm, ensuring the safety and well-being of the person it follows. Prophetic Role Filja are often associated with prophetic abilities and are believed to possess knowledge of the future. They may appear in dreams, visions, or altered states of consciousness to convey important messages or warnings about forthcoming events, opportunities, or dangers. In this role, the Filja acts as a spiritual guide, offering insights and guidance into the individual's path and potential outcomes. Connective Role The Filja serves as a bridge between the individual and the spiritual realms, facilitating a connection to the divine and ancestral forces. As an extension of the individual's spiritual energy, the Filja establishes a link to the ancestral lineage, cultural heritage, and divine powers. It represents a conduit through which the person can connect with and draw upon these spiritual resources, fostering a sense of belonging, identity, and continuity. Symbolism and Cultural Significance The Filja carries deep symbolic meaning and reflects the Norse worldview and values. Its association with animals underscores the Norse people's close relationship with the natural world and their belief in the animistic qualities of all living beings. Animals, as representations of specific qualities and characteristics, embody the traits and powers that individuals aspire to incorporate into their own lives. The Filja's role as a link between the individual and the spirit realm highlights the Norse belief in the interconnectedness of all things. It emphasizes the idea that humans are not separate from nature, the divine, or their ancestors, but are part of a larger cosmic tapestry. The Filja, as a guardian and guide, reinforces the notion that individuals are never truly alone, as they are accompanied by ancestral and divine forces throughout their lives. 
The significance of the Filja extends beyond the individual level to the collective level. It reinforces the importance of kinship, ancestral ties, and the preservation of cultural heritage. Filger, often associated with familial or clan lineages, emphasize the continuity of identity and values across generations. They remind individuals of their responsibilities to their ancestors, community, and the land they inhabit. Interactions with other mythological concepts the concept of Filja intersects with various other mythological elements within Norse mythology, creating a rich tapestry of beliefs and narratives. Some of these intersections include Valhalla and the afterlife. Filja are believed to accompany individuals not only during their earthly existence but also in the afterlife. In Norse mythology, warriors who died honorably in battle were said to be chosen by the Valkyries and taken to Valhalla the Great Hall of Odin. It is believed that the Filja accompanied these warriors to Valhalla, serving as their eternal guardians and companions in the realm of the gods. Shay shifting The ability of the Filja to assume various animal forms connects it to the concept of shape-shifting, which is prevalent in Norse mythology. Shay shifting beings, such as gods, giants, and certain magical beings, could adopt different forms at will. The Filja's transformative nature reflects the fluidity and malleability of spiritual energies and their ability to transcend physical limitations. Ancestral Worship Filja aligns with the Norse practice of ancestral worship and veneration. Ancestors were highly respected and honored in Norse society, and individuals sought guidance, blessings, and protection from their forebears. The Filja, as a representative of ancestral energies, provides a tangible connection to the ancestral lineage and allows individuals to maintain a relationship with their predecessors. Fate and WIRD The Filja's prophetic role intersects with the concept of fate and WIRD in Norse mythology. WIRD refers to the idea of destiny or fate, which is woven by the Norns, the three female beings associated with the past, present, and future. The Filja's ability to foretell events or provide glimpses into the future aligns with the belief that certain aspects of one's life are predetermined and influenced by supernatural forces. Modern Interpretations and Cultural Legacy While Norse mythology and its associated concepts, including Filja, originated in ancient times, they continue to have a lasting impact on modern culture. Norse mythology and its rich tapestry of characters, stories, and symbols have inspired various forms of artistic expression, literature, films, and popular culture. In modern interpretations, the concept of the Filja has been reimagined and adapted in different ways. It has found resonance in contemporary spiritual practices, such as modern He Henry and Norse inspired Neopaganism. Individuals seeking to connect with their Norse heritage or draw inspiration from Norse mythology often incorporate the idea of the Filja into their personal beliefs and rituals. Furthermore, the symbolism of the Filja as a guardian, guide, and representative of personal identity continues to resonate with individuals seeking a deeper understanding of their own spiritual journey. The Filja serves as a reminder of the interconnectedness between humans, nature, and the spiritual realm, encouraging a sense of responsibility, harmony, and reverence for the world around us. Ambla Ambla is a fascinating figure in Norse mythology, known for her role in the creation of the world and her association with the primeval cow. She is an important character in the cosmogonic narrative of the Norse tradition, playing a pivotal role in the origin of life and the formation of the universe. In this extensive explanation, we will delve into the mythology surrounding Aumbla, explore her significance, and examine her connections to other mythological beings and events. According to Norse mythology, before the world as we know it came into existence, there was a primordial void known as Janungagap. This vast emptiness lay between the fiery realm of Muspelheim and the icy realm of Nivelheim. The interaction of these extreme elements in Janungagap caused the creation of the first living being, Ambla. Ambla, 
sometimes spelled Ahumla or Adhumla, is described as a primeval cow, often depicted as white in color. She emerged from the melting ice in Nivelheim and began to nourish herself by licking the salt-covered ice blocks. As she licked the ice, her actions revealed the figure of Buri, the progenitor of the gods. Buri, the first god in Norse mythology, was born from the ice and took his first steps towards the world of the living. He had a son named Bor, who eventually became the father of the three most prominent gods in Norse mythology, Odin, Vili, and Vi. These three gods would go on to create the world as we know it. Ambles' role in the creation of the world does not end with Buri's emergence. In fact, she plays a crucial part in the subsequent events that led to the formation of the cosmos. Ambla continued to lick the ice blocks, and over time, she uncovered a human-like figure trapped within the ice. This figure was Emer, the first giant and the progenitor of the Jotnar, or giants, in Norse mythology. Emer, the giant, was formed from the melting ice and the primordial elements of Janungagap. He was a hermaphroditic being, neither fully male nor female, and possessed incredible power. Ambla continued to nourish herself by licking the ice, and in doing so, she provided sustenance to Emer. Her actions sustained the giant, and as he slept, he began to sweat profusely. From Emer's sweat, two more beings were created, a male and a female. These beings are often referred to as the sweatborn, or the first humans in Norse mythology. The giant Emer himself would go on to sire numerous other giants, giving rise to a race of destructive and chaotic beings. Ambles' association with the primeval cow archetype is significant in Norse mythology. Cows were highly revered by the ancient Norse people, and they symbolized abundance, fertility, and nourishment. The image of a cow, like Ambla, providing sustenance and life-giving nourishment was deeply ingrained in Norse culture. Furthermore, Ambles' actions of licking the ice blocks and revealing Buri and Emer can be interpreted symbolically. This act of nourishment and uncovering represents the emergence of life from the primal chaos. It signifies the transformative power of nourishment and the potential for creation and growth. Ambles' story also intertwines with the cosmogonic battle between the gods and the giants. Emer, the giant she nourished, would eventually become a threat to the gods. Odin, Vili, and Vi, the sons of Bor, would rise up against Emer and slay him, using his body as the foundation for the creation of the world. The gods shaped Emer's remains into various parts of the cosmos. His flesh became the earth, his blood formed the seas and oceans, his bones turned into mountains and rocks, and his skull became the sky, held aloft by four dwarfs. Emer's eyebrows were used to create a protective barrier for the realm of humans, known as Midgard. Ambles' role in the creation of the world demonstrates the interconnectedness of beings and events in Norse mythology. Her nourishment of Buri and Emer led to the birth of gods and giants, and ultimately, the creation of the cosmos. She serves as a bridge between the primeval chaos and the ordered world, embodying the transformative power of life-giving sustenance. Additionally, Ambles' story highlights the cyclical nature of existence in Norse mythology. Just as she emerged from the ice and brought forth life, the world itself is believed to have a cyclical fate. It is destined to be destroyed and reborn in a cataclysmic event known as Ragnarok, where the gods and giants will engage in a final apocalyptic battle. Lughatta Lughatta, also known as the Blood-Haired One, is a fascinating figure in Norse mythology. While there is limited information available about this particular character, we can gather some insights from various sources and extrapolate based on the broader context of Norse mythology. Norse mythology is a rich tapestry of gods, goddesses, giants, and other mythical creatures. It encompasses a vast array of narratives, characters, and cosmological concepts that were central to the belief systems of the ancient Norse people. Many of these myths have been passed down through oral tradition and later recorded in texts such as the Prose Edda and the Poetic Edda, 
which were written down in the 13th century by Snorri Sturluson and anonymous authors, respectively. Before delving into the specifics of Blug Hatta, it is crucial to provide a brief overview of the Norse cosmos and its inhabitants. According to Norse mythology, the cosmos consists of nine realms interconnected by the cosmic tree Yggdrasil. These realms include Asgard, the home of the Asur gods, Midgard, the realm of humans, Jotunheim, the land of the giants, Nivelheim, a realm of ice and mist, Muspelheim, a realm of fire and heat, Alfheim, the realm of the light elves, Svartalfheim, the realm of the dark elves, Vanaheim, the home of the Vanir gods, and Helheim, the realm of the dead. The gods and goddesses of Asgard, particularly the Asur, play a significant role in Norse mythology. They are depicted as powerful and immortal beings who govern various aspects of the cosmos. Among the prominent Asur gods are Odin, the All-Father and ruler of Asgard, Thor, the god of thunder and son of Odin, Loki, the trickster god, and Freya, the goddess associated with love, beauty, and fertility, among other domains. While Blug Hatta herself does not appear as a major character in the surviving Norse texts, her name and epithet provide intriguing clues about her nature and potential role in the mythology. The Old Norse term Blug Hatta can be broken down into two elements, Blug meaning bloody and Hatta meaning hair. Therefore, Blug Hatta can be interpreted as the one with bloody hair or the blood-haired one. This epithet suggests a distinctive physical feature or a tribute associated with this mythical figure. The blood symbolism in Norse mythology often carries connotations of violence, battle, and sacrifice. Blood was believed to possess a life force and was considered sacred in certain contexts. Warriors would often make offerings of blood to the gods before battle, and blood was a central element in various rituals and divinatory practices. The association of Blug Hatta with blood suggests a connection to these themes potentially indicating a role in battles or ritualistic practices. While the surviving sources do not provide a detailed narrative about Blug Hatta, we can explore potential interpretations based on the broader context of Norse mythology. Given the blood symbolism associated with her name, one possibility is that Blug Hatta could be a Valkyrie, a female figure closely associated with battle, death, and the selection of warriors for Valhalla the Great Hall of the Slain in Asgard. Valkyries are among the most renowned female figures in Norse mythology. They are often depicted as fierce and beautiful warrior maidens who ride through the sky on horseback, selecting fallen warriors from the battlefield and carrying them to Valhalla, where they will join Odin's army in preparation for the final battle of Ragnarok. The Valkyries themselves are considered divine beings, associated with both the Asur gods and the realm of the dead. Blug had an S epithet, the blood-haired one, could be interpreted as a reference to the Valkyries' association with battle and bloodshed. It is worth noting that Valkyries are sometimes described as having hair the color of blood or fire, further reinforcing this connection. The Valkyries' role in choosing brave warriors and their association with blood and death aligns with the epithet Blug Hatta, suggesting a possible link between this enigmatic figure and the Valkyries of Norse mythology. Another possible interpretation of Blug Hatta's epithet is that it represents a more literal attribute associated with her physical appearance. In Norse mythology, physical characteristics often have symbolic meanings and can convey information about a character's nature or origins. The specific epithet, the blood-haired one, might suggest that Blug Hatta's hair is naturally red or dyed with blood, a striking and unusual feature that sets her apart from other beings in the Norse cosmos. This distinctive appearance could signify her connection to a particular realm, deity, or role within the mythology. Considering the potential interpretations of Blug Hatta, it is plausible to view her as a Valkyrie with a unique and memorable physical trait. As a Valkyrie, she would possess great prowess in battle, participating in conflicts and selecting fallen heroes to join Odin's army. 
Her blood-colored hair could symbolize her association with the violence and sacrifice of warfare, serving as both a visual marker of her role and a reminder of the bloodshed that accompanies battle. Alternatively, Blughatta could represent a different type of supernatural being within Norse mythology. The Norse cosmos is populated by various entities, including giants, elves, dwarves, and other divine or mythical beings. Blughatta might belong to a lesser-known group of creatures or spirits with specific attributes and functions. It is not uncommon for Norse mythology to include characters with limited information and appearances. The surviving texts often focus on the exploits and interactions of the major gods and heroes, leaving many intriguing figures in the periphery. Blughatta's scarcity of information could be a result of this selective narrative focus or the loss of specific details over time. While the exact nature and role of Blughatta in Norse mythology remain uncertain, exploring her epithet and potential interpretations can provide valuable insights into the broader themes and symbolism of the mythology. The association with blood and battle suggests a connection to the violent and martial aspects of Norse culture, emphasizing the significance of warfare and sacrifice in the belief system of the ancient Norse people. Blughatta's enigmatic presence invites further speculation and interpretation, allowing for personal and creative exploration within the framework of Norse mythology. The richness and depth of this mythology provide fertile ground for imagination, encouraging individuals to engage with the stories, characters, and themes in their own unique ways. Ern. Ern is a fascinating creature in Norse mythology, known for her association with the mythical world tree Yggdrasil and her role as the provider of mead to fallen warriors in the afterlife. As a supernatural goat, Ern embodies both nourishment and abundance, symbolizing the cyclical nature of life and death in the Norse cosmology. In this essay, we will explore the various aspects of Ern's character, her connections to other figures in Norse mythology, and the significance of her role within the larger context of the Norse belief system. To understand Ern's significance, we must first delve into the mythology surrounding Yggdrasil, the cosmic ash tree that serves as the axis mundi of the Norse cosmos. Yggdrasil connects the nine realms of Norse cosmology, including Asgard, the realm of the gods, Midgard, the realm of humans, and Helheim, the realm of the dead. It is believed that Yggdrasil's roots extend to the realm of the giants, while its branches reach up to the realm of the gods. Eren is primarily associated with the uppermost branches of Yggdrasil, where she resides and grazes on the leaves and shoots of the tree. Her name, which means bright rune or glorious secret, suggests her connection to divine knowledge and wisdom. She is described as a white goat with golden horns, symbolizing purity and strength, and is often depicted as a regal and majestic creature. Erin's most notable role in Norse mythology is her association with the afterlife and the consumption of meat. According to the Prozetta, a collection of Norse myths and legends compiled by the Icelandic scholar Snorri Sturluson in the 13th century, fallen warriors who were chosen by the Valkyries to reside in the hall of the god Odin, called Valhalla, are granted a continuous supply of mead. This mead is said to flow from the udders of Ern, providing sustenance and eternal nourishment to the warriors. The mead that Ern produces is no ordinary beverage. It is called Roar or Rear, which translates to Stirrer of Inspiration or Insider of Ecstasy. This meat is said to grant the warriors in Valhalla not only physical sustenance, but also a heightened state of inspiration and poetic ability. In Norse mythology, poetry and wisdom were highly revered, and the consumption of Roar was believed to bestow these qualities upon those who partook of it. Erna's connection to mead and inspiration is further emphasized in the Poetic Edda, another important collection of Old Norse poems. In the poem Hakan Armel, the warrior king Hakan the Good is described as being welcomed to Valhalla by Erin and her mead. The poem portrays Erin as a gracious hostess, ensuring that Hakan is well taken care of and can fully appreciate the pleasures of Valhalla. 
While Erna's primary association is with Valhalla and the warriors who dwell there, she also has connections to other figures in Norse mythology. One such connection is with the god Thor, known for his strength, bravery, and association with thunder and lightning. In the poem Hymiskvia from the Poetic Edda, Erin is mentioned in the context of a story involving Thor and a giant named Hymir. In this tale, Thor and Hymir embark on a fishing expedition, during which Thor manages to catch the enormous serpent Jormungandr. Erin is referenced in passing as one of the goats that pulls Thor's chariot. Erin's connection to Thor in this story highlights her role as a participant in the larger mythological narratives of the Norse gods. While her primary function is to provide mead to fallen warriors, she also plays a supporting role in other tales, showcasing the interconnectedness of Norse mythology and the various beings that inhabit its world. Furthermore, Erin's association with goats in Norse mythology is significant in itself. Goats held a particular importance in Norse culture and mythology, often being linked to fertility, abundance, and the sustenance of both gods and humans. The god Thor himself had a pair of goats, Tangrisnir and Tangjostr, which he would slaughter for food during his journeys. However, these goats possessed the power of resurrection, allowing Thor to revive them after their consumption. This connection to goats as a source of nourishment and vitality further solidifies Erin's relevance in the Norse belief system. If you have enjoyed this video, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. See you soon.